Good afternoon. My name is Faisal Khan. This is Gary Hillman. We are the owners of Peel Engineering. Today we would like to pitch for £80,000 for 10% of our company and a little piece of history. Peel Engineering own the Guinness Book of Records, world's smallest production car of all time. Uh, Peel's was originally built on the Isle of Man in the 1960s. I've always been fascinated in cars that have tried to invent the future of transport. Whilst on a family holiday in Florida, I went into a place called Ripley's Believe It or Not, who have all the world records in their museums, and I noticed they didn't have any cars. We bought the company, Peel Engineering, and then Faisal flew to Florida. I went to see the head decision makers of Ripley's, believe it or not, in their Orlando head office. Very soon into the meeting, we had an order for two cars at £15,000 each. The first one went into their London location, the second into New York Times Square. The footfall increase was considerable and very soon afterwards we had another order for 12 more cars at £12,500 each. This gives us the opportunity of 15 million paying customers at Ripley's seeing our cars, therefore an, an, an extraordinary opportunity to sell toys. I don't think it's just the toys, you know, we can develop the brand further to have ball games, remote control, and also uh, could form a character. As you see, the cars are very cool and cute, and we would like you to uh, come up and try our cars, please. Thank you very much. You're all more than welcome. You can have the, the blue one. Property magnate Gary Hillman and marketing executive Faisal Khan have certainly captured the Dragon's interest with their life-size replica models of the world's smallest roadworthy car. How the hell did you get this? You've got your arm around me. In an attempt to cash in on the success of their cars as an international tourist attraction, the duo wants an £80,000 cash injection to develop additional merchandising revenue. Oh, 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 almost. Test drive complete. Yes. Peter Jones is first with the questions. Yeah. Well, Gary Fuzzle, that was really, really enjoyable. We've had the fun. Let's see if actually this is potentially a business. What does it cost to make on average? The cost production costs are coming down. The first time they was ten thousand pound each. Wow. Last ones we had, we built twenty built for five thousand pound each on the when we got the order for twelve. So we've got eight in stock. And why haven't you sold those extra eight? Uh, at the moment we've got a two year exclusive deal. So you're you're literally stuck now. You can't Not sell anymore. The, the the exclusive deal is just for the replica cars. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that, yeah, toys. No, okay, so we're now down to the reality. The reality is that this isn't about the cars. This is now about the ancillaries coming off the back of you selling 20 historic cars. To start off with, yeah, and, and developing the brand further, yeah. So you now, you want to create board games, remote controls, and you want to form a character. Uh, character could be formed, yeah. Give me an idea of how you're going to do that. We're saying that the... The, the brand could be from Matchbox toys to remote control toys, a lot of variations. Tell me about the remote control. What's the remote control idea? Well, just a remote control car. OK, this is very unusual, Gary Faisal, because what you're asking now is to, you're asking me to now create a business plan for this business. So your pitch is, I need help to create the opportunity. <laughs> Guys, can I say, you run the risk of coming across to me as completely half-cocked. Just, it, look, it feels to ah. me like you've kind of wandered in here, just saying, well, you know, maybe we'll, maybe we'll do retail and we thought maybe we could do some remote controls. That's not a business plan. Please tell me you've got a business proposition. Yeah, invest in these cars. And we'll Why? <laughs> oh, please, like just tell me, what, tell, no, it, what is your business proposition? And please don't tell me, I think it'd be great if we made some remote controls or some, some toys. Uh, to, we, we want to get uh, someone who is used to distributing, building car, toy cars and toy items and just putting That's them in... That's you, obviously. And putting them in the toy stores all around the world. 
This is about as half-baked a pitch, which well, isn't really a pitch, it's a bit of fun. It certainly isn't a business investment. So for that reason, I'm out. It's a disastrous setback for the entrepreneurs. Will Duncan Bannatyne help the duo get their pitch back on track? How many is there? How many designs are there? This is the only two. These are two oh, models. The only two. It's, not, it's, it's not a big market. You know, it's just not going to sell as a toy. Kids are not going to buy that as a toy. It's not, you know, there's so many toys you can buy, cars you can buy in a little box. You haven't rediscovered the matchbox toys. You know, it's like, it's ludicrous, really, honestly. There's no business here. So I'm not going to invest, so I'm up. Guys, you need help. You need full-time help. And you need a working partner by the sound of things. That's what we've come up for the money. Well, for. We're, not, yeah. we're not working partners. We're going to give you our money and run your business. Dragons don't do that. I can't invest in you, fellas, so I'm out. Three dragons out. This is not the response the experienced Gary and Faisal were expecting. And Peter Jones is now ready to have his say. This is a very unusual thing in the den. Normally people come and say, we've got these cars, legacy of the 1960s. We've sold 20, we've got a massive marketing activity going all over the world. We've got Ripley's, they're really keen on it, they're spending this amount of money, we're making £10,000 a car. That is going to generate us £120,000. With your extra £80,000, that gives us £200,000. And we've arranged with a toy distributor to manufacture these products and then distribute these products around the world because there's a real buzz about the 1960 British classic. Peter Jones, there's my money. Thank you. <laughs> that's, a well, that's a business proposition. Yeah. Well, that's why he's sitting there and we're standing out. It is disappointing on a serious note to see two sensible guys got something but not taken any level of time to really consider their vision. This is just clearly now not a business and you've made it not a business and that's why I'm out. A coherent business proposition finally comes to the fore but from the wrong side of the den and just one dragon remains. Guys, I think you're right, you know, it's a piece of history, it's a British product, it's made in this country, and there is an opportunity to develop that, you know, into a branded product. I also understand that, you know, and you've been quite upfront, you say, we don't know, because maybe a dragon can help us establish the market, establish the opportunity. Tell me about this Ripley's contract. So, so far they've bought how many? They've bought 14 in total, so far. OK, and your instinct is, over the next 12 months, what's your gut feeling as to what you think they're going to buy? Another 12. And I say they've got 74 locations throughout the world, 15 million people uh, visit each year. So one kid out of 150 people going through the door, if they bought one of those cars, it'd be 100,000 100, cars. Toy cars alone. Um... Based on what you've said, I, my instinct tells me you could make between 250 to half a million pounds on that, would be my gut feeling on 15 million people walking through. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to make you an offer. I'll offer you the £80,000, but I'd want 50%. And the reason why I'd want 50% is because I don't really know at this stage what the business is. Yeah. Can we have a moment? Sure. <laughs> Too much, huh? It's a dramatic about turn in fortune for the duo as James Kahn spots money-making potential in the business. But it comes at a cost. The Dragon's demanding half the company. Will this be too much for Gary and Pfizer? James, thank you very much for your kind offer. What we'd like to do is offer you from our stock of eight cars, one of each of the models, 
which you may want to use for a charity purpose, and 30% of our company. And if you don't recoup, we give you the money back. How does that work? If in two years' time we don't make £80,000, we give you the money back and you keep the cars. If you agree on that, we will have a deal. Got yourself a deal, guys. <laughs> Good. A novel piece of negotiation from Pfizer and Gary, but a successful one. They've given away three times more equity than they wanted, but they now have an experienced dragon on board.